Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Doug Robertson, and I'm president and CEO of Tech Southeast. Uh, my reason for being here today is just to give you all an overview of uh, what Tech Southeast is, what kind of animal it is, uh, the kind of work that we're going to be doing, how we're going to be working with companies in our tech sector, including the gaming and animation space uh, in Southeast New Brunswick. Uh, and so I'll just go mashing through uh, a quick presentation. Uh, give you a sense of uh, what we are, how we got here, and the kind of things that we're going to be doing, uh, helping grow uh, tech-based companies uh, in uh, in southeast New Brunswick. I believe this is the most most northerly corner of southeast New Brunswick. I'm just I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but we're going to call it that because we see some interesting possibilities working with NBCC Miramichi uh, and the uh, gaming and animation, the game development companies here in the Miramichi region. So. First question is what what is Tech Southeast? I've, I've got I've got three answers for you, depending on which which expert out there in the world who works with these organizations you ask. Uh, my friend Rich Bendis with Innovation America in Philadelphia calls these organizations innovation intermediaries. Uh, the principle, as you've seen through each of these three definitions, is the same. It's an organization that works with and between and among private sector, government, academia, and research with a broad focus of aligning the capacities, the technologies, the assets towards the support of the companies and the entrepreneurs uh, in the space. Okay, we're a cluster initiative. So if you work with uh, or familiar with people working in NRC and the NRC institutes in Canada have a responsibility for cluster development. Well, in a very real way, while we're not saying what we have uh, in the uh, sectors we're working with can be described as a cluster, not yet, what we're doing is activities conducive to strengthening the conditions for, for our clusters to, uh, to develop. Uh, our peer organizations, the organizations like us doing the same things elsewhere in Canada, we are the first in New Brunswick uh, to, to take on this kind of role, uh, refer to themselves as uh, innovation enablers, enabling organizations. So providing leadership to a specific industry, as you'll see in a minute, we do have a very uh, specific focus in terms of the sectors we're working with and we really drill down to work with our companies to work with the stakeholder organizations the universities the colleges the research institutes uh, and, and others to get everyone's efforts lined up behind supporting the entrepreneurs and the companies in the sector okay the uh, establishment of tech southeast follows about five years of uh, volunteer uh, research and patience and perseverance, uh, we first got together as a group of leaders uh, in, the, in the Moncton region just over five years ago. Uh, the inspiration for uh, instigating our discussion came from, I was at a conference in Ottawa uh, in the fall of 04, listened to a lady named Laura Kilcraze, who's a venture capitalist out of Austin, Texas. She was part of a small group of leaders in the Austin area, and I think you're all familiar with you know, the Austin story and what a tech dynamo it is, and, and a pretty cool city as well. Uh, but there were a group of leaders who got together to discuss what kinds of things, what kind of initiatives should we be doing to ramp up the growth of our tech sector in Austin. And I sat there and listened to her and said, why the hell can't we do that at home? And so I came back and I called people in our community like John Manship and Bob Ryback who built Whitehill Technologies and Michelle Kerensky from ALC uh, and, and a few other folks like that. And you're going to see some of those names show up in a few minutes when I introduce you to our board of directors to start a dialogue. What can we do in the greater Moncton area in southeast New Brunswick to help accelerate the growth of our tech-based economy? Uh, <coughs> we ended up partnering, uh, coincidentally, uh, with an organization based in Austin, Texas, uh, which was actually uh, gifted, if you will, uh, the institute, the building that they're in, was gifted by George Kosmetsky, who was the leader of that founding group uh, in Austin, Texas. Based on the experience they had building the success story in Austin, they wanted to share that experience and expertise with communities around the world. Uh, and so we looked at them. They had worked with uh, community regions of different sizes and circumstances, uh, from Waco, Texas, to Adelaide, Australia, to communities in Europe, doing exactly the kind of work we wanted to do. We had done a baseline assessment of who we thought we were. We thought it would be a good idea to go and get some people who knew what the heck they were doing to tell us whether or not we were full of crap or we were on the right track and help us put in place some strategic direction. How can we, what kind of strategic actions should we be looking at? 
So we undertook a project with the IC Squared Institute that took about a year to complete. We interviewed hundreds of uh, businesses, students, uh, academics, government leaders across the region to get everyone's input to get a clear picture of the kinds of things we should be doing. Tax Southeast was established uh, a year ago as a not-for-profit uh, community-based economic development uh, organization. Uh, we're a partnership uh, with, uh, as you'll see in a few minutes, a broad range of uh, parent organizations, and we're membership-based because at the end of the day, Tech Southeast was built based on what the companies in the areas, the tech entrepreneurs in the areas said they would value in an organization like this. Okay, one of the things that our friends in Austin did in their report was uh, we wanted to have someone we could look at who had been through a similar journey and, and with some relevance in terms of their circumstances. We ended up coming up with Olu in Northern Finland uh, and I encourage anyone to go Google Olu and, and their story. It's really quite uh, fascinating what they've done. Of course, the whole Finnish story is really quite remarkable when you see the success they've had over the last 15, 20 years transforming Finland into one of the strongest uh, tech economies in the world, typically ranked number two and number three globally. Um, in Oulu, uh, they're a city about the same same size as Metropolitan Moncton, about 150, 160,000, uh, about 125 kilometers south of the Arctic Circle, so they're kind of remote. Uh, they're remote from major centers, Helsinki, like uh, Moncton to Montreal, it's about an hour, 15 minutes to fly to Helsinki, so they're distant from major centers and from financial markets. And Helsinki itself is not a big Center, so they typically have to reach further than that. Uh, traditional reliance on uh, natural resources. You see in old today, there's still a big pulp mill in the center of town. But over the last 15, 20 years, building on the establishment of the University of Oulu, some other resources, and the emergence of a little uh, company specializing in wireless technologies, you may have heard of them, Nokia, uh, major research center in, in Oulu. Uh, they catalyze all of that, and in the last 15, 20 years, have grown over 800 tech companies. Uh, and for you folks here and have an interest in gaming and animation, they are now, over the last two, three years, been starting a focus on growing a little cluster of uh, uh, gaming and animation companies. This is our target market. Uh, as I said, that is as, as precise a map of Southeast New Brunswick as we, as we care to draw, but our focus has always been on what we have to work with in the Southeast corner of the province. Uh, it started off obviously in sort of Metro Moncton, but including Sackville because Mount Allison is you know, 20 minutes down the road and they've always been part of our discussion and our research. Uh, and as I said, I think Miramichi is sort of at the northern corner of southeast New Brunswick. But we see some real opportunities working with the companies here, the entrepreneurs here, uh, the college here uh, to involve uh, the, the gaming and animation sector in particular in what we're trying to do. This is our set of, uh, of uh, focus uh, sectors. You see at the top of the list, digital media, gaming, animation, software development. You can read the list. But it reflects who we are as a region in terms of the tech base that we have to work with. Um, in terms of the, the, uh, the prospects here, obviously with the interactive media applications developed, we've got a lot more companies in that space than we do in the health and life sciences space. Overall, in, in the southeast corner, we have about 140 companies operating in these two clusters, and I use that word very guardedly. Um, and the majority of those, about 120 of them, would be in the top group. Uh, we've got a much smaller group in the emerging health life sciences. So the economic uh, impact growing the health life sciences piece is a longer term proposition, but it's, we have some important assets there to work with. Our mission is accelerating the growth of innovation-based entrepreneurship and economic development in Southeast New Brunswick. That came right out of the report from our, our colleagues in Austin. And our vision is a dynamic growing tech industry driven by effective collaboration and cooperation amongst between those uh, three uh, key groups, business, academia, and research, and the government sector. Collaboration and cooperation being the key words. We spent, uh, a group of us went over to visit Oldham to get familiar with their story. And if there was one overriding impression came away with from uh, the three and a half days we spent in Oulu was the power of having everyone on the same page. Everyone sort of growing in the same direction. It didn't matter if you're talking to small business, big business, the research community, local government, national government. Uh, everyone we spoke to had the same vision about where they were going with the, the tech economy of Oulu and it was very powerful. So that was a motivating factor for us in developing a model for tech Southeast. 
our strategic goals, increasing the investment in knowledge-based companies. Obviously, we, we want to grow companies. We want to grow existing companies and support them. We want to help nurture the conditions to support startup entrepreneurs and early stage companies. So increasing the knowledge economy workforce, uh, fostering and leveraging and cooperation, branding and marketing the region. We want to give the companies and the people who work for the companies in this sector a sense of place. Uh, a friend in, in Waterloo uh, referred to it as building an address for the tribe. Everyone has a sense of, of where they are and what they're a part of. And so to build that sense of brand, that sense of dynamism about what we have uh, going in Southeastern Project. And ultimately the, the key metric is the number of companies uh, that we have. We'll be tracking obviously all of those metrics going forward. So what we do uh, at a high level, cluster development, building critical mass, working with the strategic partners, making those connections between and among the key players to support the growth of our company. Attraction and retention of talent. Uh, ask Tammy here how important that is to any tech company, big or small. It's a key challenge for all of our companies uh, finding their way to enough of the people with the right skills. Uh, and as you see in a few minutes, that's why it's important to us to have close relationships with the community college system are the most secondary partners. Uh, venture services to support primarily early stage and stage two firms with business strategy, venture capital, and funding strategies, one-on-one uh, -on -one men mentoring, coaching, and advisory services. Uh, we will work with startup companies, uh, obviously, but it's a, it's a fairly busy space. The enterprise network in the front of works with startups. Our friends at Propel ICT work with startups. So we'll look for opportunities to collaborate and coordinate our efforts so one of the things we feel really strongly about is getting to our young people, uh, and this is going beyond the college system and into our school system, because what, what we found is there's not a great awareness as kids come through middle school and into high school about the opportunities in these sectors uh, in the region. And so we've already started discussions with the school districts in Southeastern Brunswick District 1, 2, uh, and, and some of the others to look for opportunities for Tech Southeast and our member companies get into the schools and start getting the message out there while the kids are doing their math and science and entrepreneurship courses and so on. So we can get some early opportunities to create some interest uh, and some buzz in the school system. Uh, and obviously we're going to work very closely with the community colleges and the universities. Networking professional development, this is really about building the tech community and a sense of community. So we're doing a number of things uh, in relation to this. Just yesterday we held our first uh, workshop. Uh, on intellectual property issues with a national firm that specializes in, in that domain and about 30 uh, members uh, rep, uh, 